I am Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN, and today we're doing an update on COVID-19 in pregnancy. Thank you for your patience as I have waited on more data to come out so that I could give you more information. This data is up to date to the best of my knowledge as of July 6th, 2020, this is still very developing. We know a lot less about COVID in pregnancy than we do about COVID in general. And as you all know, we know not even nearly everything about COVID in general. I'm going to answer your questions to the best of my ability and give you a general update on what we know. As always, this video does not serve as specific medical advice to you. It just serves as empowering information, a link of resources in the description so that you can take that to your doctor and ask questions about your personal health. So unless you've been living under a rock since about February of this year, you have heard the word SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus or COVID-19. Honestly, if you're living under a rock, that's probably the best thing for you because you're probably not around a bunch of other people and that's what we need to do right now. However, if you don't know, SARS-CoV-2 is a virus that was discovered in late 2019 and has ended up causing a worldwide pandemic. COVID-19 is the disease that this virus causes. So the most common question I get is what is the effect of COVID-19 on pregnancy? That kind of has twofold answers. What is the effect on the person who is pregnant and what is the effect on the pregnancy itself. Let's start with the person who is pregnant. We have had a few reports come out, notably one from the CDC that says that maybe people who are pregnant are at an increased risk of ICU admission or the need for ventilator support. Of note, a Scandinavian meta-analysis, which is very high level data collection and review, as well as a recent publication in The Lancet, a British medical journal, and a US study have failed to corroborate this greatly increased risk of ICU admission or ventilation need. I think here, our take home point is, we don't know for sure. There is some evidence that says there may be an increased risk if you are pregnant and get COVID-19 of needing ICU admission or of needing and of needing ventilation support. However, we're still working on gathering this data. So potentially there, we need more information. Think about how little data we have on COVID-19 in general, and then think about the small percentage of those people who are pregnant. We're working with small numbers. So when we get two or three years out, we're going to look back at this data and know a lot more than we know right now. Importantly, it still does not look like people who are pregnant are at an increased risk of dying from COVID-19. This is really good news because a lot of respiratory illnesses preferentially kill people who are pregnant when they are infected with them. And we just really haven't seen that. Unfortunately, there have been some maternal deaths from COVID-19. Fortunately, they have been few and far between. Now, it doesn't matter what causes a maternal death. It is always heartbreaking, but it is reassuring that at very least in the midst of this pandemic, we can say if you are pregnant, we don't think you're at an increased risk of dying if you get COVID-19. So what is the risk to pregnancy or to the fetus? It does look like since I made my last video that we have elevating evidence that there could be an increased risk of both miscarriage and stillbirth related to COVID-19. This is thought to be from either or both clotting increase, which occurs as we know in pregnant people and which we are finding occurs also in people who have COVID-19. So either a blood clot forms in the placenta or there's low perfusion and blood flow to the fetus and this can cause fetal death or stillbirth. The other thing that we may find associated with this is damage to the placenta. So it looks like there's some inflammatory markers, which we call cytokines, which can affect the health of the placenta and lead to pregnancy loss or fetal death. So again, we don't have really great numbers. I can't tell you if you get COVID-19, your risk increases by X amount. But what I can tell you is that it looks like there probably is an association. So you need to be extra diligent with your hygiene measures, lots of hand washing, lots of hand sanitizer, and avoiding crowds. Let someone do your grocery shopping for you, order and go pick it up in the parking lot. Just do the best you can to stay away from people as much as possible if you are pregnant. What about the risk of other complications in the pregnancy? We have seen an increase in preterm birth in people who have COVID-19. This is a little bit hard to tease out because it likely is related to people who are really sick are also just more likely to have a fetus that shows signs of fetal distress and thus indicates us delivering what we call iatrogenically or the medical team makes a decision to deliver preterm for the health of what we are seeing as a concerning finding in the fetal monitoring. 
or because mom is so sick that we feel like removing the pregnancy will help her improve and get better. And we do see this in most respiratory viruses as well. So probably an increased risk of preterm delivery for that same reason, probably an increased risk of cesarean delivery, although notably not the 80% that we saw in the China studies. The risk of vertical transmission, which is where mom has SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 and passes the virus to the fetus and the fetus becomes infected and shows signs in utero, at one point was a theoretical but probably isn't happening thing, but has now been proven to happen. Although we have now found SARS-CoV-2 in amniotic fluid and then the fetus immediately tested positive at delivery as well, and additionally showed some signs of illness in the neonatal intensive care unit, we don't think this happens often. We think it's very rare. So we know it can happen. It doesn't seem like it's very likely, but you should know that it's out there. Of note, that baby that I'm talking about in the case report that I was reading did go home at about 19 days of life and did fine, but did have some complications in the meantime. We're not really seeing malformations or babies who have developed abnormally that we think have been a result of COVID-19. A lot of you have asked me about this headline about a study that said there's been an overall decrease in the incidence of preterm birth. And I haven't read that study. If it's true, I suspect that this is either some confounding factor or circumstantial thing that is contributing from lockdowns or decreased activity. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I don't think that that would mean COVID-19 decreases your risk of preterm labor. I think that that would mean we need to look at COVID-19 pregnancies by themselves and their risk of preterm labor. And then we can talk about worldwide incidents and what's contributing to that in kind of a separate discussion. So should you be trying to make a baby right now? I, I don't know. This is a personal decision. I think you have to weigh the risk to you of waiting to get pregnant versus your perception of the risk that I've just discussed about COVID-19 and the risk to pregnancy. You have to talk to your doctor about it because it's going to come into play a lot of what is the risk to you of waiting. Meaning if you're 39, your doctor may say, I don't know that waiting a year or two years until we're out of this mess makes sense. So I think this is very personal you have to decide on your own risk benefit analysis and you need to discuss it with your physician. What about masks? Should pregnant people be wearing masks? It is safe and recommended for people who are pregnant to follow the same guidelines as those who are not. Please, please, please to protect other people, wear a face covering when you are out in public or not able to socially distance. It's important. It is not harmful to your pregnancy, to you, to the fetus. You should wear a mask just like everybody else. I think this is one of the most important things to talk about, and that is the increase in postpartum and pregnancy associated depression and anxiety. If you are experiencing worse anxiety, worse depression, and it is affecting your ability to enjoy your pregnancy or look forward to birth or to enjoy your life in general, this is absolutely something I want you to bring up with your doctor. I will link some resources below as well as some places where you can get therapy appointments online. But the most important thing you need to do with this is talk to your doctor. One of the biggest risks to pregnancy is the risk of postpartum and antepartum, which is before delivery, depression and anxiety. So please, if you're feeling the weight of what is going on in the world right now and it's affecting you, a lot of other people feel that way and you don't need to be ashamed to bring it up with your doctor. Please talk to your doctor, use the resources below, get help if you need it. And if not, if you're just feeling a little bit of an increase in the anxiety and the depression. Know that a lot of people are too, and this is a normal reaction to a really abnormal situation. Hang in there one day at a time. I know this is a really crazy time to be pregnant, but there's a lot of people with you and we're here to listen. Please, please, please talk to us. If you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you know I have been talking about this a lot in the past couple of weeks. Most hospitals are testing you for coronavirus or COVID-19 on admission. And I think this is a good practice because it helps us conserve personal protective equipment for the nurses and it helps us risk analyze what's going on in the hospital. 
one of the most common worries that I see is what about if I am pregnant and go into labor and am found to be COVID positive at the hospital? Are they going to take my baby away? Some hospitals, thankfully a lot less than were two months ago, but still some, are using a positive COVID-19 test to force a parent to separate from their newborn and they're not allowed to do skin to skin or breastfeed or anything like that. I think this is the wrong decision. The World Health Organization and the CDC have said all along, this should be shared decision-making, meaning we should talk to the parent who tested positive and discuss what they wanna do and nobody should be forced into this. The American Academy of Pediatrics initially was recommending separation I never agreed with this policy and let me tell you why. Because what was happening is that we were removing newborns from the care of their mother or their parent in those first two days after delivery. Key days for bonding, breastfeeding, for preventing postpartum depression and anxiety. And what we were theoretically hoping that would do is decrease the neonate's risk of catching COVID-19 from its family member. That never made sense to me because at the time, we were also telling patients who tested positive to quarantine for 14 days. However, we were taking baby away for two days and then sending them all home together. So how does that decrease their risk? So in my opinion, all along, I thought this increases the risk to the parent of having PPD or postpartum anxiety, as well as low milk supply and trouble breastfeeding. Like we have research that says that, that if you're separated and you don't get to participate in skin to skin, especially if you wanted to, then those things increase in likelihood. But we don't have any data to say that two days of separation definitely decreases the risk to the newborn. We actually now have data that says those patients who separated for those two days and then were discharged home together were at equal risk of giving COVID-19 to their baby. Shocking, I know. I mean, I feel like that's a very logical thing to decide. Not to mention the fact that we were putting these babies in the care of a nurse who had not been tested at all and was just as likely to be an asymptomatic carrier or maybe even more likely than the person that delivered the baby. So it never made sense to me. Now, that being said, I definitely understood people who were sick and didn't want their baby at the bedside because they felt so bad they couldn't take care of it or people who were just worried and would prefer not to do that. But in my opinion, now and all along, we should use those two days to teach our COVID-19 positive patients how to wear a mask properly, how to wear gloves properly, how to breastfeed and then put the baby back in the bassinet six feet away so that we can decrease the risk both in the hospital and when they go home because they're going to be caring for their baby at home unless they decide to quarantine for 14 days. But my point, and this was very long-winded, has always just been, we need to support our patients in making these decisions and their autonomy to choose this. I am editing and I just felt like I needed to add in here that I got a little bit off on tangent of what was being done more frequently and now seems to be relatively uncommon with the forced separation is just that it's not supported by CDC, World Health Organization, or now the American Academy of Pediatrics. And to be clear, the American Academy of Pediatrics never recommended forcing separation. They only said they recommend separation, but now they have taken a very patient autonomous stance of shared decision making. So all of that to say, you should make sure that your hospital is following these guidelines from the World Health Organization, from the CDC, and from the AAP, that this is a decision that you and your healthcare team get to make together. Sorry for the interjection. Also, uh, my audio is about to get real bad in the video, so I apologize, but hang in there. I can definitively say if it were me, I would not choose that. And I think patients should be empowered to make that choice as well. As with all of these things, that is my personal opinion. It is an agreement with the CDC, World Health Organization, and finally, American Academy of Pediatrics, but please talk to your doctor and find out where they stand. Sorry for getting a little heated. I get very frustrated when I hear about patients not truly being given what I see as informed consent to make a decision. As far as hospital policies on visitors who can be there at birth, that is going to vary by hospital. You can check with your hospital on that. All right, guys, I hope that helps. I'm sorry that there's still so much that is not known. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will see you next Monday for another video. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me, and the comments be kind, and I will see you next time.